she's the one that just, just found out. Okay. Okay. Goodbye. So.
Silence. All stand and remain standing until the conclusion of the reading of the proclamation. Ladies and gentlemen, the proclamation, all persons having any business before this honorable court, now draw nigh, give your attendance, and you shall be heard. God save the Queen. Please be seated. <coughs> Admission of lawyers. Erica Jane Balillo. May it please the court, I move that Erica Jane Balillo be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Erica Jane Balillo be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Akash Batterjee. Yeah. Let Akash Batterjee be admitted as a lawyer of this court. James Rowland Block. May it please the court, I move that James Rowland Block be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let James Rowland Block be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Alana Bree Condon. May it please the court, I move that Alana Bree Condon be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Alana Bree Condon be admitted as a lawyer of this court. James Gregory Fife. At least, of course, with James Gregory Fife be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Let James Gregory Fife be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Jasmine Jade Hamadi. Thank you, the court. I move that Jasmine Hamadi be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Let Jasmine Jade Hamadi be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Holly May Johnston. May it please the court. I move that Holly May Johnson be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Holly May Johnson be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Geordie Peter James Pettit. May it please the court. I move that Geordie Peter James Pettit be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Geordie Peter James Pettit be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Gabriella Juliet Passati. May it please the court, I move that Gabriella Juliet Passati be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. That Gabriella Juliet Passati be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Leith Sawala. May it please the court, I move that Leith Sawala be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Leith Sawala be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Alexander Henry Schatz. May it please the court, I move that Alexander Henry Schatz be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Alexander Henry Schatz be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Alexander James Shepherd. May it please the court, I move that Alexander James Shepherd be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Alexander James Shepherd be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Romy Alexandra Sirtis. Let Romy Alexandra Sirtis be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Christina Tomey. May it please the court. I move that Christina Tomey be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Christina Tomey be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Georgia Ailey Wiltshire. May it please the court, I move that Georgia Ailey Wiltshire be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Georgia Ailey Wiltshire be admitted as a lawyer of this court. Benjamin Howe Jia Zhao. May it please the court, I move that Benjamin Howe Jia Zhao be admitted as a lawyer of this honourable court. Let Benjamin Howe Jia Zhao be admitted as a lawyer of this court. It will be necessary for the purpose of an oath or declaration that all those being admitted stand up, but please remain in your current places. Would the admittees please stand? Erica Jane Balillo, Akash Bhattacharji, James Rowland Block, Alana Bree Condon, James Gregory Fife, 
Jasmine Jade Hamadi, Holly Mae Johnson, Jordi Peter James Pettit, Gabriella Juliet Passati, Leith Sawala, Alexander Henry Schatz, Alexander James Shepherd, Romy Alexandra Surtees, Christina Tomey, Georgia Ailey Wiltshire, Benjamin Haoja Zhao. Do you severally swear or declare and affirm that you will truly and honestly conduct yourselves in the practice of a lawyer of the Supreme Court of New South Wales and that you will faithfully serve as such in the administration of the laws and usages of this state according to the best of your knowledge, skill and ability. Would you please say, so help me God, or I do? I do. Would you please be seated? Now that the formal part of the proceedings has ended, I'd like to warmly welcome you to the Supreme Court of New South Wales. Present with me on the bench today is Justice Ma to my right and Justice Brereton to my left. Each of their honours are members of the Court of Appeal. Together, we constitute the court that has, in exercise of its jurisdiction, admitted you to practice. As we gather for this celebration, I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet, the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, and pay my respects to their elders, past, present and emerging. As we celebrate your admission to the legal profession, I recognise the role which law played in the traditional societies of Australia's First Nations peoples, the first legal systems of our country. I acknowledge that our laws fail to recognise the cultural heritage and rights of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander people for many decades and the dispossession and disempowerment this caused. Today you have made a, you have made a serious commitment. You have sworn an oath or made an affirmation that you will honourably conduct yourselves in the practice of a lawyer of the Supreme Court of New South Wales and you will faithfully serve as such in the administration of the laws and usage of the state according to the best of your knowledge, skill and ability. But today is a day for celebration. Your admission marks the culmination of your legal studies to date when you can look back with pride and relief on those caffeine fueled nights spent trying to memorise your carefully tabbed and annotated case summaries with the aid of an entire rainbow of highlighters, the many hours and lectures spent analysing carbolic smoke balls, eggshell skulls and snails in bottles, and just when you thought your student days were behind you, a few more months squeezing in PLT assessments. There can be no doubt that you've all worked incredibly hard to get here. But for many of you, those achievements would not have been possible without the support of your family and friends some of whom may be here today or watching along on the live stream. They have been there through the seamless, seamless endless years of study and have also, no doubt, been on the receiving end of your finest polished skills of argument and persuasion. Today is also a day for them to share in your success. I hope you take the time to thank them for their support. In participating in this ceremony, you have become part of a tradition which dates back to the 12th century when it first became common for those representing others before courts to swear an oath before being allowed to practice. The first admission ceremony in this court was held almost 200 years ago in, 18, in 1824. Testament to the enduring nature of these ceremonies, young lawyers just like you were admitted even during the midst of the Spanish flu and world wars. You have made a commitment to uphold the rule of law to administer the law competently and with honesty and integrity, as have centuries of lawyers before you. It is out of respect for this long history that we mark your, your admission to the legal ceremony, legal profession, with a swearing of oaths or making of affirmations, and for that matter, our somewhat strange choice of fashion. Around at Christmas time a few years ago, one young member of the audience asked if we were doing Santa photos after the ceremony. Uh, I was very sorry to disappoint. But despite this time-honoured tr tradition, last year, the Supreme Court of New South Wales welcomed new cohorts of lawyers into the profession by virtual ceremony for the first time. Now that we are back in person, we are pleased to be able to continue to stream this ceremony for those unable to join us. But the changes we have made in the past year reflect the agility and dedication of the profession you are entering into 
to deliver justice outside a bricks and mortar courtroom. Throughout history, our profession has proved itself adapt to change and never so more than now. We transitioned last year to a virtual system of justice at previously unimaginable speed. Dining tables became the new bar tables, family dogs the new courtroom security, and interrupting children the new rowdy members of the public. The transformation was only possible due to the commitment of the profession to ensuring the wheels of justice continue to turn. This is something for which we should all be immensely proud. Of course, this is not the only change that has occurred in the legal profession. For almost 100 years after the first admission ceremony was held in New South Wales, women were not allowed to be, be admitted into the profession. A century later in this state today, more than half of solicitors with a practising certificate are women and many of the most senior positions in the law are held by women, including the Chief Justice of Australia and the Chief Justice of Victoria, Queensland and the Australian Capital Territory. The profession is more diverse than ever before, and this is something that we should celebrate. Of course, there is still a long way to go in improving the diversity of our profession. I am the first to admit that unfortunately there are more people that look like me in senior positions in law than look like anyone else in the community. Systemic barriers, inappropriate workplace behaviour and prejudices continue to hinder women and those from diverse cultural and socio-economic backgrounds from fully and equally participating in the legal profession. This must change. Our profession is only so strong as it is diverse. Public confidence in our legal system is founded on this profession serving the entire community, rich or poor, privileged or vulnerable. An inclusive profession also strengthens access to justice by providing culturally and gender sensitive services. No one, irrespective of their gender, sexual orientation, ethnicity, religion, disability or socioeconomic background should be left out or left behind from pursuing a career in the law. But when we look back at how far we have come, I'm confident that these barriers can also be overcome. This is a period of great change in the legal profession. There is an increasing recognition that more must be done to ensure all lawyers have a safe workplace, free, free from sexual harassment, discrimination and bullying. The normalisation of working from home will make the profession more family friendly long after the pandemic passes. And I believe the patient scale of this change is a cause for great hope. You're becoming lawyers at a time like no other. Our world is still reeling from the turmoil of a pa pandemic, which has generated fear and uncertainty, destroyed livelihoods and curtailed movements across suburbs, states and countries. We are by no means free from it. I'm told just a few hours ago Victoria, Melbourne was locked down again. But despite this crisis, the rule of law has not been suspended. History has taught us that it's more important than ever because human right at this, at this time, because human rights are at their most vulnerable at the times of crisis. When significant decisions are necessarily made with great speed and without precedent, parliamentary sessions are suspended and unprecedented powers are given to executive governments and their agencies, the role of lawyers in upholding the rule of law is more important than ever. The pandemic has raised complex legal issues that stride at the heart of our democracy and civil liberties. How do we balance public health and the right to freedom of assembly? How do we ensure expanded police powers are used in such a way as to protect the community? How do we enable those fleeing persecution to exercise their rights to seek asylum in the face of travel bans and border closures. As lawyers, the commitment you have made today to uphold the rule of law is critical to ensuring that such emergency measures balance public health considerations and civil liberties. This balance can only be struck in an environment of contestation and scrutiny by lawyers bringing matters before the courts. Our profession plays an essential role in ensuring that emergency measures are transparent, proportionate and applied in a non-discriminatory manner. At the same time, it is more important than ever that we connect the law with its profound human implications. The impact of the law on our lives has never been so pronounced. Lockdowns, border closures and travel bans 
necessarily impact our freedom of movement and in the process, our access to and enjoyment of many other rights. As lawyers, we have a special responsibility to uphold the rule of law by ensuring that the pandemic does not undermine access to justice. As a profession, we must be vigilant in protecting the rights and dignity of those disproportionately affected by emergency measures. We must ensure that even the most vulnerable have access to quality legal representation and to the full benefit of the law. We do this when we use our legal training to help vulnerable workers navigate their employment rights in times of illness, when we use commercial law as a tool to lighten the pressures on small businesses dev devastated by the restrictions, and when we help survivors of domestic violence in lockdown with abusive partners access legal services. Our commitment to access to justice requires us to be particularly astute to the justices facing Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander communities. The Black Lives Matter movement has brought the racism, inequality and abuses of power that have haunted our nation for so long to the forefront of public consciousness. Last year marked 250 years since Captain Cook first landed in Australia. Despite the significant passage of time, the Black Lives Matter movement has exposed that our critical, critical criminal justice system in times past, and even sometimes today, remains a tool of injustice for Indigenous people, who are one of the most incarcerated people in the world. This, the Black Lives Matter, Madam, and the Me Too movement present a challenge for our profession to ensure that calls for change do not pass without systemic reforms. As lawyers, we are called upon to ensure that our justice system is in fact just for all. This happens when we use our legal training to challenge narratives which sustain injustice, use our advocacy skills to defend unpopular causes or clients, whether outside or inside a courtroom, and use our legal knowledge to educate others and better inform public debate. As a member of the legal profession, you are now in a position of great privilege. You will play a trusted role in some of the most testing times in the lives of others. You will be a confident, an advisor and an advocate to many. As lawyers, we have a responsibility to use our training and knowledge as a tool of change. The past year has shown that there is much for us to defend and strengthen and remake. As the newest members of our profession, you have an unparalleled opportunity to be part of the change for the better. Many of you may have chosen to study law because you wanted to promote human rights, to reform policy or to advocate for the most vulnerable. I urge you today to remember why you decided to study law all those years ago. Irrespective of whether you practice in a commercial firm, a community legal centre, at the bar, or pursue a career outside the law altogether, I encourage you to use your legal knowledge and capacity for critical thinking for the public good. Today you have joined a profession whose support and collegiality will prove invaluable. It is easy to feel isolated especially while some of us continue to work from home. Remember that even when you are working from home, you are not working alone. Although you might find it hard to believe, I was admitted quite a long time ago. Uh, I lost my first case and I lost many more after that. Throughout my 35 years in practice, I could always count on the other barristers on my floor to share my disappointment at the unfairness of the verdict, the slight tactics of opposing counsel, and most often I regret to say the obtuseness of the judges or judges before whom I was appearing. I should put on record that I didn't include either of my fellow judges on the bench in that comment. Finally, too many lawyers still feel there is a stigma in talking about their mental health. Looking after your mental health is not something to be ashamed of. There will be times in your career when your work weighs on you to an unhealthy degree, when you feel disheartened or overwhelmed. When this happens, you should turn to the enduring things in your life, like your family, partners or friends. On behalf of all the judges of the Supreme Court, I once again congratulate you on your admission and welcome you all to the legal profession. The court will now adjourn. All stand. This honourable court is now adjourned. God save the Queen.